Hey, what's up guys? Ben Clark here for Adapt to Perform. In today's video, we are going to be talking about disability and loneliness. So normally in my videos, I often talk about fitness and I do videos and all that, but just as important as physical fitness is your mental fitness. Um, it's as important, if not more so. So with that in mind, I wanted to make some more videos about this and what better place to start, which is essentially an epidemic, is loneliness. Loneliness is massively debilitating, maybe even more so than a disability itself. Do, ha, this has massive, massive effects on people's, not only their psychological well-being, but also their physical well-being. And it shows up and makes everything a hell of a lot worse. Studies have shown that half of disabled people in the UK are lonely. And if you put that age group into the 18 to 34 category, 70% plus are saying that they are lonely. So with this massive group of things like what's causing it and how can we resolve it? Well, in terms of what's causing it, I like to break it down into two categories. That's things that you can't affect and things that you can affect. And I'll break these down even further into even further parts. So with things that you can't affect, this boils down to essentially two things, accessibility and attitude. So with accessibility, this includes like being able to get out of the house, being able to travel and be able to get to the place. That, once you're at a place, be able to get inside and be able to do things with other people. Now, unfortunately, with lots of cutbacks and that in this country, especially, you know, people aren't getting the accessibility they need to be able to live their life and be able to socially interact with the world around them. This can be whether they've had funding cut with um, housing, where they've had like, they can't get the ramps, they can't get the door access, they can't get out of bed necessarily. Um, or they have specific care times that mean that, you know, if someone's fully dependent on a care, for example, they might have to have a care call at 10 a.m. to say you must wake up at this time and then they have a bedtime at 7 38 p.m. and they've got to get everything done in that short period of time and if they're not back or they're not there for that time they simply don't go to bed simple as that it's it's easy to take for granted if you're somebody that can put yourself to bed that some people out there do not have this opportunity and you know it used to be that bedtimes were later and morning souls were earlier but they have been cut down and it's it's a real shame to see especially i see people i live in a building where there are other disabled people and i see this happening to them and it's really sad especially for somebody who's in that young age bracket you know so like you know they want to be out and they want to be doing things with their friends and their friends finish work at five but in two hours they've got to be back home because they've got to start getting ready for bed it's such a sad sight to see Now, the other thing that you can't really impact too much is people's attitude towards disabled people. Um, because of things like that are caused by the accessibility issues, um, attitude towards disabled people is one of n like misknowledge normally. People often think that disabled people can't do things because of their disability, but often it's not because of their disability, it's because the world they live in isn't accessible for them like i said before so because of the accessibility issues there is an attitude you know issue that is occurring so it's been shown that two-thirds of british people actually don't know what to say to a disabled person and this is really worrying especially when we talk about that 18 to 34 category and it's admitting that most of them are saying they actively avoid talking to a disabled person because they just don't know what to say to them. They're worried that they might offend them. They might worry that what, you know, something they might say might upset them. And this is really worrying, especially for a disabled person. You know, they want to get out there, say they have solved their accessibility issues. They get out there and that attitude towards them, you know, they don't, nobody wants to talk to them. You know, that's what they are feeling and what they are seeing on a daily basis. So it's clear that the problem is that we have in the UK, especially, is that Disabled people are being isolated from society. Now, 
the average person might think, hey, well, I see them on TV, I see them doing sports, but that's such a small part of the disabled community. Not everyone's a Paralympian, not everyone's, you know, in the movies or on TV. You know, there are a hell of a lot of disabled people that just aren't being seen and or being heard. And that's why I wanted to come on to the other part of it. And this is things that if you are to say, well, what can you do to overcome this sort of loneliness and that? And let's put the other side things aside for a second and think about what you can do to prevent or overcome loneliness. Tip number one is probably the most obvious one, but it's being more social. The more you put out your, yourself out there and the more you talk to people, the better life will be because you won't be lonely. Like, um, so uh, you probably might think that I'm surrounded by people on a daily basis. I see people all the time and all this, but you're still feeling lonely. That's might be because what real connection are you having with people? And that's what the key factor is here. I personally think that the best thing to do to unite people is a common goal. Um, so things like sports clubs, things like crafting groups and various things, doesn't matter if they're for disabled people, doesn't matter if they're not, find one that is accessible, that you can go and that you can enjoy. And when you go, you'll soon realize that people, when they get to know you, they can open up and that disability, what they see soon goes away. And that's such a great feeling that is massive towards confidence and having these people around you, making new friends and striving together towards a common goal is such a massive part of not feeling lonely because you're feeling not just having people around you, but you're part of something. You're part of something bigger than just you. So another thing you can do is stop with social media and this sounds kind of counterintuitive but it kind of relates to the first one that I was talking about but social media it sounds great it, the word in it is social you think oh I need to be more social I'll get on social media I'll start talking to people but this isn't real like intimate proper friendships this is just surface level stuff and it's not really important in the long run especially towards your mental well-being and your mental health so let's give an example like you've got some friends say you've got 100 friends on facebook and you see them all posting all their stuff about their wonderful life instead of actually talking to them and communicating with them you might see oh they've got a lovely life they're showing these lovely photos and you might say oh this is a lovely photo just think about that for a second is that a real conversation did you really like did you actually talk to it or are you just talking to a picture on a screen it's not a human interaction which is what is really important you know say you spend easily an hour on facebook each night it's probably more let's be honest you probably spend more than that you probably hate to admit it you know you sit there watching tv and you're scrolling through your phone why not change that and spend instead of spending like say two hours on facebook half an hour 15 minutes talking to someone just having a conversation turning off everything else blocking out the world and just talking to someone it doesn't have to be talking to them just walking with them you know going to the shops with someone having that real human interaction is what's important these surface level things is not what is in, helps us overcome loneliness the real things that help us with it are proper deep human interactions Another thing to do is once you've found these real human interactions, say to somebody, I am lonely. Don't be afraid to tell people how you feel and how you are, how lonely you are, because chances are they might be lonely too and they might be seeking out someone to be with all the time. And when you have that connection and you say like, we're lonely, we, we both are lonely. Let's change that together. Let's do something together. Let's you know, go and party together, let's go and play badminton, let's go do something, let's find something we can do. And when you find other people in the same boat as you and you're all striving towards that goal, like I said in the first one, it's such a magical thing and it really does tra transform your life. Now to finish with, I just wanted to talk about my own experiences with loneliness because I'm not, 
I wouldn't say I've ever been chronically lonely in my life, um, but there have been periods and fairly long periods that I have felt lonely and like, you know, I didn't know if this was ever going to change. I didn't know if it's my disability, but I f obviously I found out because I'm definitely not lonely now that it was my attitude and it was my attitude towards my life. And it wasn't really the accessibility issue because not much has changed since then. You know, I still have my car. I still have my freedom that I had. I can get in, I can get out of places. It was my attitude really. Um, and I realized that I could get out there. I could do things. It might take longer. It might take a lot more preparation, but I could get out there and do the things that I wanted to do. All I had to do was find the way. So that overcomes the accessibility bit, the attitude bit. Or in terms of attitude, I forced my way into things to change people's attitude. I do things like this. I talk to people online, um, not via social media. I talk to you guys via the videos, I mean. Um, but I really push myself out there to prove that I can do these things and I can show the world that there is ways to do it. So it's all about forcing the narrative, you know. A lot of people say fake it till you make it and that couldn't be further from the truth when we talk about loneliness. Force yourself to be happy and you will be happy. With mine, I decided that I needed to change my situation. I was sad, I was lonely, I was a little bit depressed. So I was like, I need to change this. And it was actually my mother who told me that I need to change this, but um, that's not here nor there. That's just something, that was just an outside influence which really helped me along the way. But I went to a, my old swimming club and I said, I wanted to be the, a coach. What can I do? How can I help? And I went there and I started coaching and that was really the big sort of change around. And from there, I set up my own business. Um, I now do two YouTube videos a week. I travel the world with my girlfriend. I, and it's sort of like this ball rolling of more and more things happening. And I'm so social and interactive and doing things that I don't even think about the loneliness now. And to be fair, it was actually quite difficult to make this video and talk about it because I'd almost forgotten what loneliness was and that's quite a weird thing to think because it was such an all-consuming thing on my life and now it's I don't even think about it so much so it's really something important that I wanted to share with you guys and really sort of help somebody out that might be in the situation that I was in and if it did then hey I really uh, hope that I helped you out um, and if not then hey let's guide you in the right place and put you in the right, right position so if you are feeling lonely right now and you you try these things that i've talked about if not google and the internet is a gold mine of things that you can research just type in disability loneliness how to overcome loneliness and google these things there's plenty of websites out there like scope um, and various other sites i had to look at some of them for the research for this video um, but there is an abundance of research out there. There are people that have written it down. There's people with testimonials and what they've done. So please go and explore and really help yourself because at the end of the day, the help's not going to come to you. You've got to go and get it. You've got to go out there and grab it. So I hope you do. Um, and if you like this video, then please subscribe. If you want to support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash adapt to perform. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Thanks guys.